What are the best food items for Chapter 3? Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. We're back with another installment of my series of guides for Chapter 3, where I'll cover all of the new features and gameplay mechanics, and how you can use them to your advantage in your own playthrough. Today, we're going to be focused on foods, so all of your common fruits, fish, and generic cooking, in addition to all of the meals that you make in the cooking pot and all the new juices, including the stuff that you'll need to get the Powered Up achievement. As we go through them, I'll of course give you their relative stats so we can determine what the best foods are. So without further ado, let's get into the fourth installment of Guides for Chapter 3, Jutes, Meals, and Food Buffs. Let's start with all of your generic food items. These are the kinds of foods that you can make on the grill or pick up normally, so no specialized cooking equipment is required. And just for your reference, your hunger and thirst bar both have a capacity of 100 units, so 50 units is half of your bar, 25 is a quarter, etc. While you can drink salt water, it removes 5 water and gives you absolutely nothing, so negative values are also a thing. Normal fresh water, however, grants you 40 thirst. It's also worth noting that Raft operates on a craving system, so the more full your hunger or thirst bar is, the less effective a given food is at replenishing that bar. So something with minimal returns, like strawberries and bananas that only grant 5 food and 10 water, become almost negligible the more full you are. The other kinds of fruits don't fare too much better, always granting 10 or less food, but at least they give decent water. Like a watermelon gives you 25 water per bite, and each watermelon lasts for 2 bites, so that's 50 water and 10 food per melon. In terms of pure fruit strats though, pineapple and mango are definitely the best consistently formable option because they grant 10 food and 20 water per plant, which certainly isn't bad. However, even raw beets and potatoes match that food stat, each giving you 10 food points. Raw foods become especially useless when you're full, so definitely don't eat them unless you're really in a pinch. Shockingly, silver algae and mushrooms also give 10 hunger too, but even raw herring and palm frits grant slightly more, albeit with a slight thirst reduction. Pretty much all of the raw meats take away 10 thirst, but grant some food depending on the specific item. Raw meat only takes away 5 thirst, but if you absolutely need to eat a raw meat for whatever reason, raw drumsticks are absolutely your best bet. They grant 20 food points without removing any thirst, which is actually directly on par with cooked herring and pomfrets. frites. Then we move up a bit to the cooked salmon and catfish, which grant 30 hunger per bite with 3 bites per fish for a total of 90 hunger, but we're categorizing per bite here so they'll stay here in the overall food ranking. In terms of early game food though, cooked mackerel and tilapia are definitely your best bet because they give 35 hunger per fish which is directly on par with the cooked meat and drumstick that aren't as easy to farm until later in the game. But the best generic food option is of course cooked shark meat, as it grants 40 hunger per piece. Then there's some interesting generic foods that aren't necessarily as good, but they are still useful. Honey gives 20 food points and 15 thirst points, but it also takes glass to craft. And goat milk grants 40 thirst points but requires farming goats but that's not necessarily what makes them unique. Honey and the bucket of milk are special in the fact that they are the only generic food items to give bonus food and water, so let's take a brief detour to explain what those bonus hunger and thirst bars do and why they're useful. When you eat certain foods, like the honey for 10 bonus food, you'll notice a little extra bar appears next to your hunger bar. This bar also has a capacity of 100, just like your normal bar, despite looking a lot smaller. However, it will always decay slower than your normal hunger bar will. In normal difficulty, it takes just about 24 minutes to deplete a full bonus hunger bar as opposed to the 18 and a half minutes for your normal hunger, making this definitely worth filling up if you're looking for more bang for your buck. Anyways, all of the advanced cooking or juicer recipes grant bonus hunger or thirst and that's why any of that matters. So moving right along, let's talk about the normal recipes that you can make in the cooking pot. There are a total of 10 normal cooking pot recipes, which includes the leftovers item that you get when you combine any ingredients that don't make up a dedicated recipe. And the leftovers grant 10 food, which is right on par with raw potatoes, so don't do that. First is the mushroom omelette, which requires one potato, two eggs, and one mushroom to create, and gives 35 food and 35 bonus food for a total of 75 food points granted. As a general rule, these recipes tend to give an equal or greater amount of bonus food as they do normal food, 
so everything is good in that regard. Vegetable soup is next, requiring just 4 potatoes or beets to create, and it gives you 40 food and 35 bonus food for a total of 75 food points. Then we have the steak with jam, which replaced the old drumstick with jam recipe, and this one requires 1 potato or beet, 1 raw meat, and 2 red berries for a return of 40 food, 5 thirst, and 40 bonus food for a total of 80 food points and 5 thirst points. Simple fish stew is pretty similar, requiring 2 potatoes or beets, and two herrings or palm frits, and gives 40 food points and 45 bonus food points for a total of 85 food points. This one is way better than cooking all of the parts separately, plus it gives you something to do with all of those pesky small fish that you have lying around if you don't intend on making 40 billion shark baits. Coconut chicken comes next, which you'll need two drumsticks, one coconut and one mushroom to create, but it grants 55 normal hunger and 55 bonus hunger, for a total of 110 hunger, with an additional 10 thirst replenished. Sushi is one of the new recipes that replaced either fruit compote or fish stew, both of which were removed from the game, and you'll need two mackerel or tilapia, one silver algae, and one egg for this one. It'll give you 50 normal hunger and 65 bonus hunger for a total of 115 hunger points. After that is the shark dinner, which requires two raw shark steaks, one mushroom, and one silver algae, to gain 45 normal food and 70 bonus food for, again, a total of 115 hunger points, but keep in mind that this is slightly better than the sushi because of the bonus hunger decay, which decays slower than the normal hunger. Next is the barbecue, which is the other new recipe that replaced one of the other two we talked about earlier, and this one needs one raw meat, one mackerel, one drumstick, and one mushroom for 65 food points, and 75 bonus food points for a total of 140 food points, which makes this recipe the best in terms of pure numbers. But the unsung hero of the cooking pot recipes is head broth, which requires one potato or beet, two puffer heads, and one bucket of milk to create. This is deceiving because it only grants 20 normal hunger and 10 thirst, but it gives 100 bonus hunger, which again is better than normal hunger. In terms of food efficiency though, I'd have to give it to the simple fish stew as the best bang for your buck. Plus, there's all of the bonus fiber that you're getting in all of your diet from consuming all of these clay bowls with all of your meals. Now we get to talk about all of the new juices. Again, there's a leftovers item that you get when you combine anything that isn't a recipe for a lame 10 water points. For the real juices, we will start with the coconut beet that requires 3 coconuts and 1 beet to create and gives you 50 normal thirst and 30 bonus thirst for a total of 80 thirst points. All of the juice recipes also grant a nominal amount of food points, but it's less than 15 per, so I'm not going to mention it for every item because it's pretty negligible and you're probably not using juices as a food source anyways. Next up is the strawberry colada, which requires 1 pineapple one strawberry and two coconuts for 30 water and 50 bonus water for again a total of 80, but as we've mentioned, the bonus bar is better because it decays slower. Then we have the simple smoothie, which you'll need one mango, one pineapple, and two coconuts for to get 40 water and 55 bonus water for a total of 95 thirst points, which certainly isn't bad for stuff that you have generally lying around. The silver smoothie requires one banana, one mango, one bucket of milk, and one silver algae, for 40 water and 65 bonus water for a total of 105 thirst points, which is definitely better than the sum of its parts, but it requires silver algae, which can be kind of a pain to farm. The mango nana is probably the best use of your time in my opinion, as it's pretty easy to farm the one mango, two bananas, and one milk that you need in order to get a total of 45 normal thirst points and 70 bonus thirst points for a total of 115 thirst points, so this is the most efficient juicer recipe in my opinion. But in terms of raw numbers, it's almost identical to the red melon, which you need one red berry, one strawberry, one melon, and one coconut for to get the opposite split of 70 normal thirst and 45 bonus thirst to match the 115 thirst point total of the mango nana. And that's all of the juices, so we move on to the final category of specialty foods. You can only unlock these recipes at the trading posts on large islands in tiers 1 and 2, so you'll have to put in some special work to obtain these but they are most certainly worth it because they also provide some cool status effects when you consume them. Of course, these are also the recipes that contain other ingredients that you get from the trading posts, so if you need help understanding the trading posts themselves, I'd recommend the first episode in this series to clear things up. Anyways, we'll start with the two juicer recipes because they're kinda boring in my opinion. 
The red beat shot, which is of course named after the development team that created Raft, requires two beets, one coconut, and one turmeric for a return of 5 food points, 10 water points, and 25 bonus water points, which is pretty small compared to the normal juice recipes, but it does grant you some extra hit points. Then there's the spicy pine berry, which you need one pineapple, two strawberries, and one chili for the exact same 10 measly water points and 25 bonus water points, and this one makes you swim slightly faster. The meals are more interesting though. Starting with the catfish deluxe, you'll need one potato or beet, one raw catfish, one mushroom, and one chili for 40 food and 55 bonus food points for a total of 95 food points, which is middle of the road, but this one makes you run faster. The salmon salad requires one pineapple or mango, one raw salmon, one silver algae, and one turmeric for the same 40 food, 55 bonus food, and 10 water to drive for slightly longer, which is probably the most useful buff in my opinion. Then there's the mysterious hearty stew that you'll need one potato, one mushroom, one raw meat, and one juniper to create, and it only gives you 20 normal food and 30 bonus food, but it works kind of like a budget version of Minecraft's Totem of Undying and lets you live another time. I suppose this is useful if you're going into a situation where you know there's going to be danger, but overall this is not as helpful to me. But if you eat and drink all of these at once, you'll get the powered up achievement, so that's pretty cool. And that's literally every food item, so now it's time to answer the real question. What is the best food item in Raft? Well, it's gotta be the cooked mackerel and tilapia for the early game. You can start farming them pretty early for some pretty substantial returns. Of the normal cooking pot recipes, I still think it's the head broth is the best if you have plenty of puffer heads to spare, but the simple fish stew is pretty good overall. For juices, definitely the mango nana, hands down. And of the buffed items, I honestly don't know. Probably the salmon salad for the increased lung capacity, but who knows? Let me know what you think down in the comments. So I hope that answers the question for all of you. Anyways, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.